Today, I'm going to be talking about the Roe v. Wade decision um, that was overturned by the United States Supreme Court and how I'm thinking about it and seeing it. And hopefully that it can, my perspective can help uh, some or one of you. And if this message does not resonate with you, that is fine. If it challenges you and your thought processes and might crack you open a little bit, that's great too. So stay with me. Hello, everyone. This is Meredith with a Y, and I am your host, Meredith Willett. Today, we are going to go deep, changing lives, and I am giving you the keys to the castle. Okay. <laughs> Roe v. Wade. It's a big one, right? I mean, this is like... This is like the end of an era, the beginning of an era all at once. You know, it feels like feels like someone just slammed a lead door in our face. And if you are on the other side of it, it might feel like this great victory. Like you have finally you're finally a part of the change that you wish to see in the world. Um. But however you see this, however you find this decision, the decision is going to work for both sides of this equally in very different but very specific ways. Because nothing is outside of the scope of moving the collective forward into a new place. Okay? And this is really important. And this is going to be a very high level podcast. So this is not going to be um, basic information. This is not going to be um, very human views, you know, because all of us humans see things very differently, experience the world very differently. This is going to be a very high level kind of energetic collective um podcast. So if you're going to stay with me today, um, I would really suggest to imagine your mind opening, your throat opening to hear me, your heart opening to receive any type of um, information and change, um, you know, courage, go down to that gut and then root in safety. So using all of your energy centers. And if you know what chakras are, just kind of opening them up at this moment to understanding a higher message outside of the human experience, but that is also using the human experience to change you. So humanity is merely the tool. It is merely the, the, the game board, if you will, for your higher self to experience awakening and also to experiencing expansion and full knowledge. So, you know, at, at this time on our planet, uh, there is a need for change. Okay. The old way isn't working. If we look back even, you know, seven years ago, if we look back 10 years ago, we kind of were coasting. And I've talked about this on podcasts prior, where I remember thinking to myself just a few short years ago, wow, our, our people on this planet are so apathetic to everything. We're just kind of coasting. And then with the election of 2016, all of the coasting stopped. There was no more coasting for anybody. Um, We were cracked out of our shell. We were flicked out of our coma. um, And we we were brought to a place of um, very quick understanding and clarity of, of our existence. And that we actually believed in things and we had passion for things. And we... Um, started to see the world from very different points of view. And so the election of 2016 really opened our eyes not only to the possibilities of change, huge change, 
um, that we were about to experience. Um, it brought us out of the dark spaces of humanity and brought it all to light for good, but it also felt like clearly for bad, right? But everything is always a lesson and a blessing. And so it's a matter for us to find out how it is a lesson and blessing. And so with the election of 2016, everything kind of became possible. Nothing was taken for granted. It began the space of, you know, on a daily basis, nothing was for sure. Everything was uncertain. And then came the pandemic to really challenge the, the flatline, the baseline of what the human experience is to look like. And as you're listening to me and as, I, as you're seeing this in your mind's eye and kind of going through your experience through these, these changes, I want you to understand that all of this, although individually may have been profoundly negative. You may have lost someone in the pandemic. You may be experiencing profound racism or otherness based on the political landscape of what's going on in our planet. But at the same time, there is an awakening that is happening that everything that has been in the cracks and crevices of our planet, everything that has been the norm of, of society and politics and religion and health and the way we work and the way we experience the day-to-day, -day, all that is over with. It's over. Money is changing. The way we value things is changing. Our workday is changing. Healthcare is changing. Schools are changing. And we're watching the separation between, hey, um, why are we still teaching kids to memorize stuff when they can find it on Alexa or Google in a matter of seconds? Does it make sense to memorize still? Or should we be teaching kids emotional intelligence and empathy and the way to figure out problems, not necessarily the problem's answers. That's where you see, um, you know, common core math is, is about learning how to think. And I know I've talked about that on pod the podcast prior because we, our kids don't need to learn answers anymore. They really don't. They need to learn how to think. And so you're seeing the education system changing. And the people that are very stuck or cemented in or in line with the way that things were done 10 years ago, where you see the, you know, like, let's stick with American values or, um, you know, we need to keep things the way that they are and, uh, you know, take us back to the way, you know, make America great again. Um, those people are really stuck in the old timeline that is gone. And they're fighting tooth and nail to keep it because it's comfortable for them. They enjoy the, the, uh, the calmness of knowing where they sit on the planet, knowing what their kids are learning. Um, they want their kids to do it the way that they have always done it because that seems comfortable to them. You know, we, we look at, I just listened to a podcast by Gary V the other day, and he was talking about, you know, the fact that our education system is so antiquated and that things are just, they're naturally going to change. The fact that parents want our kids to read books, but get off the iPads and, you know, go to college, even though that might not be in line with the best path for our kids, but we hold on so much to our childhood our past because the the comfort of the known is so much easier than the discomfort of the unknown 
And I talk to clients about this all the time. You would rather stay in a shitty relationship in a shitty education system that's antiquated and does not help our children at all. That was made for an industrial, uh, uh, you know, world where our kids worked eight hours a day. They didn't argue. They sat. They did. They listened to instructions. They stood in line. Um, they did what they were told. That's for an industrialized nation. And we are moving away from that. And so the, the way of teaching kids that format in that in that way is a waste is wasted. It's dumb. It doesn't work anymore. And that's why you're seeing the breaking away from that. They're just showing me right now of children with ADHD, that they can't sit still, that they need hands on, that they need it visually. Um, they need it uh, audibly. They need it hands on. They need to take part in an activity. Those children that have been leading the way for the last 20, 20 years by way of an ADHD diagnosis, if you will, that says, hey, this shit that you call education, it's not going to work for us in the next hundred years. And instead of listening to them, instead of moving with these kids that have come to change the planet, we medicate them and say, nope, 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 nope. And I'm not I'm not against medication. You do what you want to do. But I'm just telling you, these kids that are built different came to change the education system. And we fight them tooth and nail and we do it in everything because we want, you know, to make America great again. We want to keep the norm of what we know. We want to keep whites in power. We want to keep men in power. Um, we want to keep a traditional family system. We want to keep religion. We want to keep the normal school day. We don't want to challenge a white, white authority, male authority. We don't want to, we don't want to challenge religion because you have to understand the generation X generation, uh, baby boomers and, and so on. They know that. They know what that looks like. They know what that brings to them. The comfort that these systems brings them comfort. It brings them normalcy, neutrality. The discomfort of changing the education system, challenging politics systems, challenging religion systems, um, challenging... Uh, the way that we do things, that is what you are seeing right now in Roe v. Wade. That is what you're seeing now by um, individuals and groups challenging books that our kids are reading, like Maya Angelou's The Bluest Eye. Are you kidding me? And so we are right now in the state of uh, a contraction before the birth. It's uncomfortable. All the people in the world that are out there right now holding on for dear life to the systems that have been in place since the day that they are, were born are being challenged. And so there is a push and a pull to, to not go there and to go there all at the same time. And I find it so interesting as we're moving into the age of Aquarius, into the div divine feminine, into the awakening, into true knowledge, true awareness, that they're using the divine feminine, the creation that all of us are created from, the mother's womb, to fight this battle. It is it is entirely perfect. It is entirely significant. It is entirely spiritually obvious to me that this is what they're using, that they're using the knowledge and trying to hold back from the change that is inevitable. But the thing of it is, as you'll know, if you've ever delivered a child, when it's time to deliver the baby, you use the contraction for new life. 
You don't fight the contraction. You don't hold the baby in as the contraction is squeezing and pushing and 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 all that energy is being used to deliver this new life. You don't stop that because stopping it, stopping it, as we will know, is going to be way more painful than the delicious relief of being allowed to use the movement and and the force of change to create new life. And so the unrest that we are seeing is the fight of new life. I love it so much for everybody. Anyone that's listening to this, I hope that you are swimming in this because it is freedom from the collective disinformation, the collective lack of awareness. Even though they're showing me everyone is aware, they're just still fighting it. And so what I would ask you to do is to not allow yourself to fight the fight to fight. I find it interesting that as we move into this new birth of life, um, it has been shown that we will be two different earths per se. And I find it interesting that literally (laughs) it's going to be 50% of the United States will be you know, still allowing abortion and 50% will not. So it's literally a splitting of two sides. And, and I've talked about this a hundred times, but, you know, Jesus came, you know, the awakening is coming to, to allow you to step in or not. You do have a choice. You have a choice to allow this to move you forward into anger or move you forward into hatred or fear and faith. And I know people that are listening to this, but Meredith, but Meredith, but Meredith, what are we going to do? There's going to be so many unwanted pregnancies. And, um, you know, I'm already seeing on social media people banding together, working towards, um, positive outcomes from this you know no one's no one's going to keep anything from anybody to be perfectly honest with you this is more of an energetic you know semicolon in life but they have to attack attack the females they have to because women white women especially, have been profoundly complacent in allowing men to take the lead. I am guilty of it as the day is long. Well, Jim, can you just call for me? Can you just handle this? Dad, can you handle this for me? And nine times out of 10, it doesn't get handled. Not the way I would do it. But I have leaned on my husband's privilege of being a white male, I have leaned on my husband of being a man. And it is a huge punch in the face with this Roe v. Wade decision that that time is over. It is time for women to take their power, to step into the power that is already theirs and take a stand. To step outside of religion and government, to step outside of capitalism. There's so many people that I know that are like, um, they sit on they sit on uh, the news all day, complaining about people that aren't working, and you know, there's not enough money, and look at inflation. And I say, instead of sitting on the news, how about you just go start a side hustle or become an entrepreneur and start your own shit. Step outside of the government. Step outside of religion and get spiritual. Stop leaning on pastors and ministers and priests. Stop leaning on the Bible. Stop leaning on your schools to be the one to educate your children. 
Stop being so fucking lazy. Yeah. Stop being so fucking lazy. It's no one's job to do this shit for you. It isn't. It's not your husband's job or your brother's job or your dad's job. It's your job. Time after time after time, I talk to women on appointment and tell them, you are the leader of your house. I know you don't believe that. I know you're waiting for your husband to make plans for the next vacation or handle things at home, but you are the leader. And the more you wait, the more miserable you are. We are the creators of all that is females. Life does not happen without our uterus. We are the conduit between spirit expansion, existence, and humanity. And I'm not saying this doesn't happen without, uh, you know, sperm. But without a uterus, shit don't happen. And so we need to take that to a macro level and say, what else are we in charge of? What else are we responsible for in life? That is life. Right? We need to stop. We lean into religion and ask these priests and ministers and prayers and pomp and circumstance and stand up, kneel down, fight, fight, fight to save us from an afterlife Why? What? Stop leaning in. This is on you. My daily life, I work to not touch government at all. To not touch religion. To not lean too hard into the education system. Because I'll be sadly disappointed. It's, it can't keep up fast enough with the changing of our planet. And Roe v. Wade is flicking us forward at monumental speed to take our power back. How dare anyone take our power from us? Our health care, our right to privacy, Right? But what they're doing is they are trying to squeeze and hold back the forwardly progression that is coming, that is going to be the breakdown of the financial system, that is going to be the breakdown of religion and schools and the way people lean into government. The more broken we are as a society, the more we need government, the more control over our life they have. And I find it so interesting. And this is, again, a little bit off, but I find it so interesting that the very groups that are screaming words like communist and communism and socialism, they're the exact same groups that are banning abortion and books. That's communism, people. Banning books is communism. Banning abortions is communism. Look in the mirror. That is not freedom. That's communism. That's control. And if you want a certain thing taught to your children, that's called homeschooling. Do it. Homeschool your kid. If you're so incensed about what's being taught and how it's being taught, homeschool. That's an option. But instead, these groups want to control and call it America. They want to control with banning abortion, even though it is a right of all Jewish and Muslim people to get abortions. And saying, you know, 
freedom of Christianity. Well, what about freedom of Judaism? What about freedom of being Muslim and getting an abortion? Is that communism or is that freedom? Can't have it both ways. You don't get to cry America and and ban books at the same time. What we are going through, we are in the middle of a contraction. And so, so what I would say to you is this. You can get in the thick of this. You can freak out. You can suffer. As with anything in life, you are in your rights to suffer. You are in your rights to be miserable and to freak out and, you know, do all of the things. But what I see here is that this is an opportunity for women to take their power back and be autonomous in their household with their children, with the way that they teach about spirituality, with the information that is given to their kids, et cetera, with their bodies, et cetera. This is an opportunity to walk away from the constraints of government that we perceived as being for us, that were never for us. The system was not created for women. Religion was not created for women. But we believed it. We believed it. And so you got to ask yourself, how are you going to get through this contraction? Are you going to breathe through it? Are you going to fight through it? Are you going to fight it? All different people are going to do this all different ways. But the way I'm going to do it is I am going to prepare my sons and daughters for the reality of the world that we live in. And I'm going to help them to be self-actualized in themselves. When I coach parents who are looking for parenting advice, I always tell people, stop trying to make the world prepared for your kid. Calling teachers, calling coaches, calling your, your kids, friends, parents, calling, 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 calling your kid. You're not coaching. I don't like the way you teach. You're a friend. This friend's a bad influence. No, the world is never going to change for your kid any more than the world is going to change for your family or you. This is a ride, guys. You're in a kayak going 300 miles an hour down white water traffic, you know, in Colorado. Buckle up. You have to prepare your kids, your family for what it is that you want to prepare them for, to be self-actualized so that they don't get in trouble. When my kids, my older kids were younger and, you know, social media started to rear its ugly head and, you know, you porn and all the shit that's available, you know, on, on at any given second of the day. And I'm not saying this worked, but I still did it. I just told my kids, look, what you can find on the internet might not be good for your brain. And so you really want to protect yourself from these things because it can alter your mind. You're going to be able to find drugs and alcohol and, you know, put yourself in situations. But I want you to know what that looks like and what the ramifications are of that, because the whole world is out there for you. And so I would say to you, prepare your family and your children and yourself. I've already gotten text messages from people already this morning. It's when I'm recording this, it's June 24th, the day of the decision. What should I do, Meredith? And I say, 
get on an IUD, go buy, buy a couple boxes of plan B, make sure that you know what states an abortion is legal in if you were to so in fact need one. Go buy a copy of all the books that are being banned. Make sure your children understand the world around them. What are you going to do during this contraction? It's up to you. You can fight it and be miserable and cry and carry on, or you can see its greater purpose. I know it's coming. I can't tell you when. Because just like everything in life, we have to go through the different stages. You don't know when your kid's going to come out of your body. You know, is labor going to be 24 hours? Is it going to be three weeks? Is it going to be 48 hours or five minutes? That is the variable, right? It's when the body is ready and not a minute before. Can't plan for it. You can't say, well... This is what this is when I want it to come. Doctors try with Pitocin and breaking the water and, you know, doctors try. I want this baby out by five o'clock because I have a golf match at six. Uh, But that's not the healthiest way. That's not the best way for the birth. Naturally is the best way for the birth. Calmly is the best. Not fighting it is the best way for the birth. And so when you're thinking about what is going on on our planet, remember that we're in labor. What would I do? What's the best way to ride this out? Healthy, without suffering, without sadness. How do I prepare? Because I know it's coming. You know, you spend nine months preparing for the delivery. What do you do? You don't run around like a lunatic trying to avoid it. You prepare the nursery, you prepare your home, you prepare your family, you prepare your body. You might do meditations or do yoga, pelvic exercises to open the pelvis to make the birth smoother, right? So what can you do in your home for you, because this is all about you, right? It's all about you. What can you do to prepare for this experience on a daily, on a minute basis, staying away from the news, not getting into arguments, staying safe, knowing your options, Because if you think for one minute that your government is here to save you, your government, no matter where you live, is the largest distraction that I have found to happiness. And I find it mind-blowing that it's very, one of the most difficult things to avoid. You could avoid church. You could homeschool your kids but you can't really avoid taxes or the way your government operates. It's kind of woven into all of our lives, which is probably why it's the loudest gong that that makes noise in our world because it touches every one of us. Interesting. So I really hope that this helps you to see things This is a grand scale, Roe v. Wade is, but this can be happening in all different ways in your life. And so if you start to apply, if you decide that, hey, you know what, this I can apply to so many different things in my life, a new job, a new career, moving, a health scare, a health situation, is I'm going through a transition to get to another side that is going to be for my greater good. I'm being squeezed. I'm being changed and challenged. And I might be in pain and I might be scared and I might be lonely. 
but this is a lesson and a blessing, but it's my responsibility to look for it, to own it, to capture it, to create it so that when I'm on the other side, I can value the path I just walked because it's not about where we're going, people. It's about how you get through this. It's about how you let this change you for the better. It's about how you look around and go, you know what? I have been leaning on my husband, my dad, my brother, my boss. I have been leaning on my government. I have been leaning on my church for my salvation. I have been leaning on the schools to educate my children, even though it's not for their greatest good and in the best way that they can learn. I have been leaning on what has been delivered up to me as being the way we do things and the norms of society. And I don't know if it's working for me. And so as you look at what I'm talking about, apply it to everything in your life. If you're going through a cancer scare right now, if you're going through an illness, if you're going through a job trans transition or a move or whatever the hell, ask yourself, how do I want to get there? Do I want to fight the whole time? Do I want to be angry and pissed off that the world is controlling me? Or do I want to get there smoothly and take something along the way as a lesson? I find it completely valuable to do this in all things at all times. I truly hope that this um, helps at this time for those of you who are completely panicked because I know a lot of you are. And if you know someone that might need to hear this message, even if it's not to do with Roe v. Wade, maybe something else that you heard, be sure to share this with them. Um, I hope that it helps. I always hope that I'm helping. And again, if this message does not resonate with you, thanks for, you know, staying with it this long. I appreciate it. And, you know, if you're still over there and you want to march and you want to protest, that's also being an active participant. But just know as you march and protest, you are part of change. You are part of taking your power. Maybe you're somebody that has always sat back and always sat on the couch and never participated. And this is your, this is your moment to participate in your own life. And that is a beautiful thing. So it's not that we should be sitting back. That's not what I'm saying. It's not that we're just supposed to ride this out and watch it happen. But you can participate and not suffer at the same time knowing that we will be on the other side of this. Thanks so much for listening. I really appreciate you guys. If you haven't left a review, please do so. If you haven't left stars, please do so. I so appreciate each and every one of you. If you haven't checked out my retreat, October 13th through 16th, uh, Glow Retreat, glow-retreat.com, that's coming up. Um, I only have probably 25 spots available for me to fill. So if you want to hang out and do yoga with me and listen to um, all of the great speakers and eat delicious meals and hang out for a few days. We're going to be doing uh, open Q and A. So you can ask all your questions to myself, coach Letha J and Valerie Inez, who are my two other um, gals that I'm doing this retreat with. It's going to be an amazing awakening experience. I, I, I am so looking forward to it. So get on over to glow retreat.com. That's in the show notes here. Um, and, and sign up today so I can hang out with you in October. Thanks so much, guys. See you next week. Thanks for listening. If you would like to connect on a more personal level, head over to MeredithWillits.com or on Instagram at Meredith with a Y for behind the scene footage and outtakes. Please subscribe and come back each week for more Meredith with a Y. Thanks again for listening. Cheers. Cheers.